Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So, uh, what I did today was, I was inspired by my last project, and I went ahead and I made a video hosting service. So, uh, my last project, in case you're wondering, is on my GitHub now. And I did make a video about this. It's called Alien, and in this project, I basically made a chat service, and it works through an API, not by sockets or anything like you would normally expect, but it's a very basic chat service, and you know, I was pretty proud of it, you know, especially for using Rust for the first time. Well, that project took me about six days. This project I made all tonight, and I did take some code based on uh, this project. I also actually post a Stack Overflow question. So if we go to Stack Overflow real quick and look for my question, yes, I am not a robot. Um, I'll just look for Rust Axe on here. It's probably gonna be the newest one. Uh, special thanks to StratusFearMe21. Appreciate the help. I didn't know about the default body limit. That is, there's a lot of stuff that I really wish was just documented a little bit better, but Anyway, let me go ahead and show this off. So uh, whenever you come here, I'll, I'll show how it works later. Uh, it says video streaming service, upload your videos now, and you click on upload a video, and it'll put this little form here. You can come to choose a video, and here's my AWS video. I think I deleted it, so it's not gonna make another copy. Yeah, so um, you select AWS.mp4 right here. It has to be an MP4 file, just because I didn't care enough to add any more. So AWS, uh, upload video, and it'll say video upload successfully, and then these are the watch parameters. So we can copy this and replace the upload up here, just paste right here. And now uh, it'll take us to this page. It's a very basic page. There's absolutely nothing impressive about it, but we can start playing the video. Uh, let me go to mute my mic just so, one sec. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up servers so yeah um, it does work the videos clearly play and as far as I know there's no issue with it the only thing that might suck is that um, I'm pretty sure this is all stored in memory because it's a normal video element and it's not being streamed so uh, when it comes to things like YouTube that's a problem because then if you're playing it on a really crappy device and you're watching like a 15 hour long video for some reason you're not going to be able to watch that video that's going to be way too much memory um, whereas for simple things like you know this like the most that this can be is about one gigabyte which is you know really really just around a gigabyte if we're being honest here just like it's roughly the same thing um, then really as long as you have at least one gigabyte or one gigabyte ish you know memory then you're not gonna have any trouble you know showing this video so there are limitations to this of course um, of course like I said I made this in a day but now uh, instead of kinda explaining this out the ass let's go ahead and work on actually showing you how I made this so uh, contrary to my last project as well I only have one main.rs file and just a bunch of methods in here uh, when it comes to the actual dependencies, I also have a lot less dependencies. So I have Axum, of course, uh, which you do need to actually activate the multi-part flag for. Tokyo, which I just prefer to keep on full. I don't know if I really need it. Include directory, which is nice for the static files. Mime guess, which is nice for guessing what kind of file it's going to be. Basically, .html is text slash HTML and SVG is um, I think it was either, I think it was image slash SVG plus XML. I don't know, it's weird. That's why I like this extension or this dependency. Axum client IP, this is actually for IP addresses. So uh, down here you can probably see serving 127001. That's actually the IP address it's being sent to. And this could be good for debugging purposes or maybe production purposes as well. But for now, um, I really just had it for testing purposes. Uh, Nanoid, which is for generating a unique identifier. I use this for the uploads. That way I don't have to use a database. I just upload the file, and if the file name matches, well then whoop-de-doo, we have a match. 
Futures here is something that I don't use directly. I don't know if I still even need it in the project, but I'm just leaving it for now. And then substring here is for knocking off uh, part of a file name so that you can put it in the URL right there. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and show you, let's not show you the main.rs yet, let's show you the very basic HTML. So here is the link and you just click on this link and there's actually an event listener. There's nothing I really have to explain with the HTML, just maybe the JavaScript. So this is going to have a create element here. This is going to essentially make creating an element a lot simpler. So instead of having create element, set attribute, set attribute, set attribute, you can do create element with the tag name here, as well as in arrays, um, the pair of uh, attributes. So like the attribute name, attribute value. This just made it a little more convenient. And then of course, uh, to actually append a child, it's just the element.append child. And to replace uh, everything in the body, it's replaced children. And yes, this does work on Chrome and Firefox. I don't know if it works in any other browsers because I haven't seen this before. To get the URL parameters to actually display the video, it's all in one index.html file. There's no separate HTML. It's simply creating a new URL search params and it's checking if it has the watch parameter here. If it does, it's going to pretty much figure out what the URL is based on that watch parameter and it's going to try and just do like a simple get request, um, which is basically done entirely with the HTML5 video and source tags. Uh, we just add this uh, to the window document body and suddenly we have our video playback. So uh, now getting into the main.rs, which is the bread and butter of everything really. Uh, as you can see, we have a way of generating a video name. This just makes sure that whenever the video name is generated, this file doesn't already exist. While this is supposed to be cryptographically safe, uh, you just you, you never really know uh, if something's just not going to be unique or not. So you have to check. So that's all I do here is I just validate that or verify that this is not going to be an existing file before it actually creates the video. Here's just the wrapper for that. So all it's doing is checking to see if that file exists. And I am actually a little worried that this will not work because uh, when it comes to the code down here, where I kind of explain that um, basically new files would be rendered as non-existent by Axum and by the include directory create. Um, I, I basically had to do a new approach down here where I do video path exists. So this code up here, while I'm not really going to take the time to fix it right now, probably could use that patch as well because I really doubt that this is going to get a non-cached version of the directory and discover that new files are there because it didn't work in testing. It's probably not gonna work in production. Here is just a simple way of getting an application upload. So one thing that is not very well documented is the default body limit. This is going to set the size of basically a message body. So if you're going to send some message that's going to be you know X bytes big, uh, this is going to essentially change that limit and I don't change this limit in the main app router that way if like for some reason a DDoS attack happened which granted I know I like I could have made this part up here a little bit safer but I did try and keep like a little bit of security in mind at least even though this is just a fun project um, theoretically by keeping this limited it's going to kind of help with bandwidth but when it comes to up here, uh, obviously for slash upload, we don't really want that security because we want them to be able to upload a file size um, that is actually practical for videos. Uh, over here though, um, everything else is restricted to the same amount and there's a simple send 404 function in case you get a 404. Uh, it's simply doing the normal uh, Axum startup. This is actually a little bit different. So this is specific to the client IP crate, which I showed right here, um, Axum client IP. So that just kind of lets us get some client at, or client information from the person requesting the page. That's how you get the IP address essentially. When it comes down to handling static, you'll be 
not surprised at all to discover it's the exact same code that I had in my previous project. And then as I briefly mentioned here, I had to do some special stuff here. So I'm still doing the normal path. I'm still doing the normal mind guessing, uh, you know, uh, but when it comes down here, I actually had to get the cargo manifest directory value and I had to use that to get the uploads folder and get the uh, theoretical path of the video. Then I simply try and convert that path buff to an actual uh, path object, the standard one, not the one provided by Axum. That actually provides a method exists, which I can use to check to see if that file exists, in which case I'll read the contents of the file and I'll respond with the contents of the file to the client, or I'll say the video doesn't exist, and it's as simple as that. When it comes to uploading, it's a little bit different. So here I have kind of this same process of getting uh, the manifest directory. The video name is left as none for now by default because it's set in here. I get the file and this is actually based off of the name of the form which is set in video.js. So wherever it says file browser button right here, uh, for one, that's not necessarily a button, it's more of like a dialog pop-up but anyway this is going to uh, where it says name this is going to designate that the contents of that file are going to be processed by this name um, whereas if you had another field with another name it's going to have different values and you can send those all in one form so you have to check which form it's going to be so if the if the name is going to be file which is as designated in video.js we know we got our file so all we do is simply you know, push it to a file that ends in .mp4 to make sure nothing bad can run. And um, it's as simple as that. And then after that, you just return the video name, substring, uh, the length of .mp4, which is just four characters. And suddenly you have a full on response and it's as simple as that. Uh, coming back here, uh, as you can see, it, it does work really well. It just doesn't look as good. I did not take nearly the same amount of time to try and stylize this. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Very small video, just a cool little demonstration of using Axum for multi-part uploads. So if you want to take this code, I, like I said earlier, I think, the uh, link is in the description to the actual new GitHub page for this. Of course, this is going to be published as MIT, so pretty much use it wherever you want. With that being said, I'm out of here. Peace out.